Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Word. We thank you for the way the Word affects our life. And now, we ask in Jesus' name to give us that portion of the Word tonight that will be of great benefit to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's have Bible study. Now, let's go tonight to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 28, and let's do a little bit of study. Angie, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the Savior on the cross? Jesus. Jesus. Where did he get his name? Um, we studied, from God. Okay. When? When? He got it way back in the Old Testament. All right. When, when did they name him Jesus? When the angel came to Mary. When, when the angel said, came to Mary and said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All right? Now, look at chapter 28. Uh, when the, now, we have studied uh, about the crucifixion of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And we have come through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, correct? Now, uh, look at Acts chapter 1 before we go to Matthew 28. Look at Acts 1. And read verse number 3. I can't find Acts. All right, here it is. All right, Acts 1 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. Of 40 days. And spoke about the kingdom of God. So he walked with them for 40 days, okay? Now... Look at verse number, uh, verse 4, next verse, look, look at verse 4, read that. Getting there. Acts 1, 4. Okay. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. Wait for the promise, okay. Which the Father promised. Which the Father promised. Which Verse 5. You, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. In a few days you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay. And, and so uh, he walked with them for 40 days. Now, look at verse number uh, 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And so now he ascends back into heaven. And after his ascension, or just before he goes away, he gives them a commission. Okay? This commission is found in four different places. Acts 1. We look at Matthew 28. And let's, tell, let's see what Jesus told them to do. Uh, after he went away. Look at Matthew 28 and verse uh, 18. This is just before he goes away, okay? Read verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All, right, all authority or all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Read. Therefore go, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptize them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end to of the To the very age. end of the world. So Matthew records this commission where he says, go and teach all nations. This is what he wants his disciples to do. Go and teach all people. Now you asked the question uh, one night in Bible study about what happens uh, to somebody that they're a good old boy, but they never hear the gospel. We were born lost. The Lord is saying, because men are born lost, you must go. He gave the commission to the church, to his people, to go and teach all nations, okay? Uh, and, and baptize them in the name, not names, notice, name. In the names, nope, name, N-A-M-E, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Look at Mark 16. Now, we're going to get into some real uh, good stuff here tonight. Look at Mark 16. Question? No. Okay. Mark 16. 
And Dolan, I want you to begin reading at verse number 15. Now this is the same exact thing, the same exact thing that we read about in, Mar in Matthew, just a different version, okay? Mark 15, 16 and verse 15. Read. And he saith unto them, Go ye into all the world. Go into all the world and. And preach the gospel to, to every creature. You, you know, that's, that's the driving force behind me is I would love to be able to preach to every man and woman in the city of Wichita, Kansas, because this is where God sent me. Okay? Look at verse number 16. He that believeth and he is baptized. He that believeth. And is baptized. And is what? Oh, baptized. You, he that believeth and is baptized mm -hmm. shall be saved. Read that from NIV, Angie. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be what? Will be saved. Saved, all right? But he that believeth not shall be damned. And obviously, if you don't believe, you won't be baptized, right? Mm -hmm. Shall be. So the unbeliever is going to be what? Condemned. Damned or condemned, mm -hmm. okay? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Read verse 17 from NIV. And these signs will accompany, accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. Drive out demons. They will speak in, in new tongues. They will speak in new tongues. These signs will accompany the believer. All right? Go to Luke chapter 24, and let's look at Luke's version of the same exact passage. All right? Luke chapter 24. 24 and verse 46. Verse 45, I'm sorry. All right, Dolan, read verse 45. Then opened, then opened he their understanding. Where did they get understanding from? From Jesus. From Jesus. He opened their understanding. Okay? This is what happens to every child of God. God opens our understanding of the Scriptures. Read. That they might understand the Scripture. And verse 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. Read. And, and that. And that repentance. Repentance. And remission. And remission of sins. Should be preached in his name. Among. All nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. That's awesome. This is called the Great Commission. We have it from three perspectives. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All right. Read verse 47 from your Bible. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning where? At Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now, go to the book of Acts, where the book of Luke ends. The book of Acts begins, all right? For instance, when you find Acts 1, hold your finger there and go back to Luke 24. Look at verse, all right? Let's go back to Luke 24 again. Hold your finger at Acts 1 and go to Luke 24. Look at verse 49 from Luke. Ascension. The ascension. Mm-hmm. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until you be. Until you be endued with power from... All right, just hold your finger on that verse and flip over to Acts 1. And verse 4. Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith of he, you have heard of me. So you see, you, so you see how Acts ends, I mean, excuse me, Luke ends mm -hmm. and Acts begins? Mm -hmm. That's the, just the, now the, the book of John is sandwiched in between, okay, because it's a gospel. But where Luke ends, Acts begins. Where Matthew ends, Acts begins. Where John ends, Acts begins, okay? So go, go to uh, Acts chapter 1. He said, 
Tarry into Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. In verse number uh, four, verse five, for John truly baptized with water, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and uh, not many days from now. Uh, verse number eight, read verse eight, Angie. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem. And not it, Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? You'll be okay. my witnesses. I'm a Jesus witness, okay? okay? Well, wait, real quick. How, how is Jesus still talking here? I thought he was already gone He was again. crucified. Mm -hmm. He rose again. Mm -hmm. This was in that last of the 40-day period when he walked on earth for 40 days after his resurrection. That's he, the part I never heard. I, I guess I, I missed that, that too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me make sure we understand. Uh, in, in, in Acts 1, all the way down to verse 8. Okay, this was his last day on earth after his resurrection. He, he walked among them uh, according to verse 4, oh, excuse me, verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. So he was seen 40 days after the resurrection. For 40 days, okay? In verse 8, he said, this is his last day. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and all Judea, and in Samaria, and all the way to Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is called the ascension, right? Mm -hmm. Dola, mm -hmm. Let's see if I got a chart here. I was always told that he... Um, came out of the grave and then that was when he ascended into heaven. No, I he, no he, he stayed here 40 days after his ascension. Praise God. And, and now, in verse number 9, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, two men stood by them in white apparel. Those were angels. Mm -hmm. Which also said... You men of, Jude, of Galilee, why stand ye? Now, the mind says gazing. What does your say? Why do you stand here looking into the sky? No, I wouldn't have been looking. You know what I'd have been doing? I'd have been gawking. <laughs> I know. I mean, this dude's defying gravity. He's not just, well, yeah, there you go. Praise God. Hallelujah. No. If I'd have been standing there and saw him rise, yeah. I'd have been a Venus flytrap. So, so after... Um... So after he was hung on the cross, he was taken down and put into a tomb. Three days and three nights in a, in a tomb. Mm -hmm. In a borrowed tomb, by the way. He's only going to use it for three days. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then he came out for... Did, did anybody know? Oh, yes. He was seen by over 500. Uh, somewhere it says that, it, that he was seen by more than 500. I'll find that verse in just a minute. Uh, he, 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 he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Okay? Uh, hmm. Look at verse number 12. Angie, read verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem. From Why did they return to Jerusalem? That's where God told them. He told them to. Over and over. Go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Okay? So they returned to Jerusalem. All right? From the hill. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Okay. Uh, that's why I don't like NIV. Okay. When they come in, they went into an upper room, an uh, upstairs room, okay? Where abode, read. Um, those, those present were Peter. Peter. John. John. James. James. And Andrew. Andrew. Philip. Philip. Thomas. Thomas. Bartholomew. Bartholomew and Matthew. Matthew. James. James. Simon. Simon. Judas. Judas, the brother of James. There's 11 of them. Okay. 11 disciples. Why aren't there 12? Judas. Okay. Judas hung himself. All right. Verse 14. So these are all the disciples. All the, the disciples for, are there, okay? For 40 days, this is who walked with him? Uh-huh. Okay. Verse 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer. Constantly in prayer. I love that. Along with the women and women? Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus. And with his brothers. And with his brother. Okay. Verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. So there's 120 of 
true dyed in the wool believers, okay? That have followed him every inch of the way. Notice, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled with the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake concerning Judas. They go have an election, and they're going to elect another disciple to take Judas's place. Okay? Verse uh, 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the twelve apostles. So he becomes the twelfth man again, okay? Now, how many is in that upper room? 120. 120. All the disciples, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, one church teaches that Mary only had one child, Jesus. But the scripture says that Mary had other children also. Is that what this means here in 14 where it says, and with his brethren? Are those his... That's dealing with uh, the, the, the verse 14. Uh, yeah, on 14 right there. Yes, uh, it was okay. seen Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Possibly. Okay. Okay. It could could it have just been like yeah. okay. believers? Believers. Okay. Now look at Acts 2. And when the day of Pentecost, the word Pentecost means 50. Pentecost was a feast day of the Jews celebrated 50 days after the Passover. Okay. So this was a Jewish feast day. It, rep it, it always represented the beginning of the barley harvest, okay, or the wheat harvest. And uh, they would take the sheaves of wheat and wave them to the Lord uh, as a wave offering. So this was a Jewish feast day just like Passover. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. I didn't know Honda was back then. <laughs> and in one place. Read verse 2 from NIV. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a... Violent wind. Like a tornado. Came from heaven and came filled the whole from house. From where? Came from heaven. from heaven. And filled the whole house. Where they were sitting. All right. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. That separated. Uh-huh. And came to rest on each on of them. On each of them. In verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in other tongues. As? As the Spirit enabled them. The Spirit enabled them. So the first time, this is, this is what the Lord aimed for from the book of Genesis. That was to restore himself back into mankind. And now Jesus has died on the cross. The blood has been shed for the forgiveness or remission of sins. And now we can again have intimate fellowship with Almighty God. And so he fills them. Didn't he tell them, he said, go back to Jerusalem and wait, you're going to get power? Mm -hmm. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Didn't John prophesy and say, there's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. This was the first outpouring of the Holy Ghost after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This had never happened before. Now, hold your finger right there and go back to the book of, in the Old Testament, to the book of Joel. Um, right here in 13, that John, that's, the, that's John the... Baptist? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Go back to the book of Joel. That's going to be hard to find. I can't hardly find that myself. It's a little book before Amos and after Hosea. It's probably it's listed as J-L or J-O-E-L. the New Testament? Oh, where are you at? Old Testament. Go to Old Testament. Old Testament. Hey, oh, pastors. I saw it. Past it. What'd you say it was before and after? After Hosea. Oh, okay. Right. What is that? There is Joel. Yeah. All right, look at Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Right. Joel, I still Joel 2. Find it. Mm -hmm. Obadiah. You'll see. Uh, okay. Right there. All right. First. By the time we get through this Bible study, y'all going to be well versed in the Bible. All right, look at Joel 2 and 28. Verse 28. Uh, read for me, Angie. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit I will on pour out all my spirit people. upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Prophesy. Um, your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I'm seeing visions. <laughs> I'm not dreaming yet. Okay. <laughs> 
Verse 29. Even on my servants. On my servants. Both men and women. Men and women. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. In those days. Okay. So Joel prophesied there was going to come a time when God would pour out his spirit. Go back to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 28. And see what the Old Testament has said in Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 and verse 11. All right, read for me. Uh, for with stammering no. lips and another hold tongue. It, hold on, hold on. Look at verse number. Uh, verse 9. Start at verse 9. Uh, whom shall teach uh, knowledge and whom shall, shall he make to understand doctrine? All right. Uh, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For uh, precept must be upon priesthood. See, this is what we've been doing for weeks now. And that is we're building the Word of God in our lives precept by precept. All right? Uh, line upon line. Line upon line. You know, one sentence at a time. Line upon line. Look at verse 11. Uh, for with stammering lips. Stammering lips. And another tongue. And another tongue. He shall speak to the people. He shall people. speak to his people. Verse 12. To whom he said, this is the rest where... Wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. All right. And this is to refreshing, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Read verse uh, 11 from yours, Angie. Very well then, with foreign lips and strange tongues, God will speak to his people. <laughs> to whom he said, This is the resting place, let the weary rest. Okay. And this is the place of that's a That's a direct reference to Acts chapter 2. Okay, okay go back to Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, we got to understand the tumultuous situation that's in Jerusalem. There's a feast day. You remember we talked about Nebuchadnezzar destroying Judah mm -hmm. and Assyria destroying Israel? Mm -hmm. They scattered the Jews upon the face of the whole earth. It was called, in historical language, it was called the diaspora. The Jews were scattered throughout the entire earth. Uh, when they destroyed Jerusalem, okay? Now, on feast days, the, because of the Roman Empire being so vast, they were allowed to go back to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast that they had always celebrated. So we have Jews there out of every nation and every tongue, okay? Now, look at verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Got it? Verse 5, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, what was noised abroad? This rushing mighty wind, this speaking in tongues, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard him speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marvel, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? I mean, these, the, the people in that upper room that were speaking in tongues were simple people from Galilee. And, and, and yet, they, th these people from all over the world was hearing them speak in dialects that they understood. Now, please understand this one thing. The Roman Empire ruled the then known world. All of Western Europe, all the nations around the Mediterranean, all the area of the Middle East was ruled by the Jews from Italy, uh, through the Palestine, through the Baltics, all through Western Europe. They had a universal language. The Greek language was a universal language that was instituted by Alexander the Great. And so no matter where you lived in the Mediterranean, you spoke Greek. But you still retain the language that you originally was born with. Well, these Jews, they, whatever language they was born with, in, in Jerusalem they spoke simple Greek. But when, they, when these disciples started speaking in tongues, they recognized the dialect that they were speaking because they knew that language from where they were born. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Uh, they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, are these not all which speak Galileans? Verse 12. How hear we every man in our tongue where we were born? Okay. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, 
uh, Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. When a person is speaking in tongues, when the Holy Spirit comes in, they are simply magnifying and praising God for his wonderful acts. Okay? Somebody said, why did God choose tongues? You, you know what you get in trouble with more than anything else, Dolan? Hey. Mm -hmm. That little devil right there, that little <laughs> clean one, the pearly white gates, <laughs> mm -hmm. can get you in a lot of trouble. It's unruly, isn't it? You ever been mad? Mm -hmm. You got a temper? Not really. You ever get mad? Mm -hmm. You ever lost your tongue? Mm -hmm. Bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. If the Lord can control your tongue, he don't have to worry about the rest of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I need to preach on that. <laughs> okay, what's this? They were amazed and, and doubt, saying, one of them, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, They are what? Verse 13. Full of wine. Make fun of them. They made fun of them? And said they have had too much wine. They've had too much wine. They're drunk. Now, they were drunk, but not from the wine that they thought of. They were, they were drunk from the wine of the Spirit. We call that Joel's bar. Joel said in the last day, you know, you have to be around a long time. That's okay. okay. <laughs> but Peter standing up, who is Simon Peter? Standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you and listen to my words. They are not drunken as ye so. Now, he didn't say they weren't drunk. He said they're not drunk like you think they are. Seeing is but the third hour of the day. Read verse 16, Angie. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Prophesy. Prophesy, sorry. Okay. Your young men will see visions. That's me. Your old men will dream dreams. That's others. Even on my servants, okay. both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. So Simon Peter said, look, what you're seeing here today, what happened in that upper room, the Lord prophesied 700 years ago that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And the Lord chose the day of Pentecost, the feast day after the resurrection, to fulfill his word and pour out the spirit. Okay? He happened to do it on the 50th day after the resurrection. Now, Simon Peter begins to preach to them. Okay? Look at verse 21. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at verse 22. He's going to nail their hides, okay? I mean, he is going to plaster them. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves know, him being delivered by the determinate council, that's the San Adrian Council, and the foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Let me ask you a question. Dolan, let's suppose one night you take a ball-peen hammer and just kill him. Graveyard dead. And we just weep and cry and put him in a bra grave and, and we seal him in a real nice tomb and cover him up and put a headstone up there. You say... Finished with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so you'd have to bar about 50 days later. And you're sitting at the bar stool. And somebody comes bursting in and says, Angie, Angie, Angie. What, what, what? Dolan's down the street. He's alive. And he's coming this way. I'd run. It'd kind of scare you, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because you killed him. And you, you buried him. You saw him. You saw him put him in the grave. And he's alive. You say, oh, my God, I killed him. I'm the one who did that. He's coming after me. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing here. He said, hey, guys, what you see and hear in Jerusalem, speaking in tongues and praising God and rushing mighty wind, that's Jesus doing that. And, 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 and you, you do to the one that killed him. That kind of scared me, too. Watch this. It might get you killed. For whom, notice, you by wicked hands have crucified a slain whom God hath raised up, 
having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. So now Simon Peter, his first sermon, he preaches the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's alive and on this earth, okay? Now, go down to verse number 36, verse 32. Verse uh, uh, 31. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. Verse 36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. In other words, when Jesus Christ came out of that grave, what did they put in the grave? A body. Mm -hmm. The Spirit had to withdraw itself from him for it to die. They put the body, the Christ, the man, in the grave. Three days later, the Spirit of God that had lived in him for 33 and a half years went back into him. Guess what happened when the Spirit went back in him? It raised him up, made him alive. Mm -hmm. He came out of the grave. Whenever you, whenever you see God anymore, you will always see God through the face now of Jesus Christ. Because God glorified that body, and now the, he is the full embodiment of God. When you get to heaven... And you see God, guess who you're going to see? Jesus. Jesus. Now, he's not, going to be, he's not going to be the lamb anymore. He's not going to be this meek little fellow, okay? Now, he's going to be the lion, L-I-O-N. He's going to be the, not the lamb of God, but the lion of the tribe of Judah. You're going to see him in the fullness of his power. L let me just give you an illustration of what you're going to see, okay? Go to Revelations chapter number 1. Last book <coughs> in the Bible. Well, well, what kept uh, all the disciples from getting killed or crucified, you know? Well, that's a good question. I mean, because if they were mad at Jesus... They probably... ran. The Bible said they scattered like flies. But they remembered later that he would go before them into Galilee. And so they, they reassembled themselves. Mm -hmm. they, they stayed hidden. For a fact, one day, one day they're in a house after his resurrection... And the door was shut, gates were locked, windows were sealed, and all of a sudden he appears in the middle of them. Hmm. And he told Thomas, he said, Reach here and put your hand in my side and see that it is I. And Thomas said, My Lord and my God. So he showed himself many times after the resurrection, and many times he showed himself, and we'll study more about this later. Uh, he, he just kind of showed up wherever he wanted to show up. He didn't, he didn't have to walk. He didn't have to open the door. He's glorified. He could just walk through the wall. Hmm. He has no limitations now. Mm -hmm. And when we are resurrected, there won't be any limitations on us either. You follow me? Mm -hmm. You won't have to go around the block to get somewhere. Just go through the block. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at Revelation chapter 1. And this is what you're going to see Verse 12, I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes was as a flame of fire. His feet like fine brass as they burn in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. That is the glorified view of the Lord Jesus Christ when you get to heaven. When you see him, everything that you've ever had to give up, everything that you've ever had to sacrifice, one glimpse of him in heaven is going to be worth everything you ever suffered down here. <laughs> That's going to be it. one awesome day. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right? Is the seven relate to the... It says... The seven golden candlesticks. Yeah, does that relate to God's completion? God's Is completion. That... You remember in the tabernacle they had that candelabra. Mm -hmm. There were seven. Each one had a place for seven candlesticks, and that represented the presence of God. So He was standing in the midst of the 
the, 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 those seven candlesticks represented the churches. So he was standing in the midst of the churches or the Christians. Okay. And now there is a completion here. That's, that's good. That's good thinking. All right. Go back to Acts. Verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified. He is both Lord or God and Christ. When they heard this, read verse 37, Angie. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? They want to know. They're scared to death. Jesus is alive. And they want to know what they got to do to escape. Now, are these the people that made the decision to crucify him? Yeah. yeah. Or, or is this just like the, the multitude? The multitude. But they all made that decision. Mm -hmm. They all cried, crucify. Right. They're the ones that gave credits to what the Sanhedrin wanted. They're the ones that let Barbaras go and stuff. Uh -huh. okay. All right. Barabbas, okay. Barabbas. All right. Read verse 37. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Read that from NIV. When the people heard this, when they, the were, people heard this they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And said to Peter said and to the Peter, other apostles, okay. brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? And what did he say? Peter replied. Peter replied. Repent and be repent baptized. And be baptized. Baptized. How? Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Christ. name of Jesus Christ. Jesus took on God's name. So the name of the Father was Jesus. He, the Son took on that name. What was the Son's name? Jesus. Jesus. The Spirit of God had a, his name was Jesus. Okay. That's why it says repent. And be baptized. Who? All of you. All of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins. Again, I'm going to use the word remission here, okay? okay? He does more than forgive. He remits. He pays in full your sins for your sins. He doesn't just forgive you. He takes away your sin. He pays your sin debt in full. He said... Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. It's very important to understand. He gave very specific instructions. Now, we talked about in a couple of lessons ago about repenting. And I think you told me you repented two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did, did, the Lord, did the Lord hear your prayer? I think so. Uh, no, no, you don't think so. He absolutely heard you. Okay. okay? But that's not all that you have to do, is it? Right. Notice, he said you have to repent. And repentance, again, uh, you remember when I prayed the cross here in the last lesson? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know every individual sin I've committed because I have a touch of Alzheimer's. <laughs> I forget. It's called old age. I was going to say, I think that's... Huh? I think that's old age. Yeah, that's old age. Not all. Okay. But I know that I've done wrong. Repentance is a, that feeling in the heart that you want the Lord to forgive you. If you know, you know, if I offend you, Dolan, please forgive me. I need to repent of that individually, okay? Mm -hmm. But many times I don't know everything I've done wrong. And I have to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. That's what we've already done. He does forgive us, but he wants to do more than that. He wants to take away that sin. That's why he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission or the taking away of your sins. What is the only thing that can take away your sins? Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. Hold your finger right there now. Go to Matthew 26. Let me share this with you. All right. Matthew 26 and verse 28, 27. And where it says forgiveness, read the word remission, okay? Okay. Angie? Then he took the cup. Okay. Gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many 
for the remission of sins. So the blood is what remits our sins. The question is not what remits our sins. The question is where is the blood applied to our life? Now, now didn't we read it? Something a little bit ago similar to uh, uh -huh. verse 38. Yes. All right, look at Luke 24. Look, Luke 24. And 47, uh, 48, Luke 24, 48. You're sharp, though. All right. Verse 47, Luke 24, 47. Read verse 47, Dolan. Got it? Mm -hmm. Read it. And that uh, repentance, repentance and remission of sins and remission of sins should be preached in his, in his name. Just hold your finger on that verse, okay? Mm -hmm. Flip over to Acts 2 again. That's the Great Commission, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said, repent. Didn't Luke say repentance? Mm -hmm. And remission of sins should be preached in his name? Okay, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, right? Mm -hmm. So he, Luke is saying that repentance and baptism should be preached in his name. Mark said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Peter said, go and teach all nations, baptizing them. Okay, again, it's a very important to understand that you are saved by the blood of Jesus. That's not the question. The question is, where is the blood applied to us? And that is, when we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, that's where the blood of Jesus is applied to our lives. That's why baptism is so important. Now listen to me. If anybody tells you that baptism is not important, run from them. Because that's not what the Bible teaches. Look at, look, read verse 38 again, and so we'll know how important baptism is. They ask, what shall we do? Angie, read verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the For the remission of sins. You have to be baptized in order to receive remission of sins. You're not just baptized. Now, many, many churches baptize to make you a member of the local congregation. That's not the reason to get baptized. You get baptized for the remission of sins. When can you get baptized? After you repent. Now, can a baby repent? Mm. We don't baptize babies. Did we talk about Noah getting on board that ark and his children getting on board with him? Mm -hmm. Because they were under his authority. Children are perfectly all right under the parent's authority until they become accountable. Or an accountability is that ability to repent. There are some people who never reach age of accountability. We have some retarded people in our church, mentally retarded. They never reach the age of accountability because they never have a consciousness of sin or the ability to know sin. So they never reach the age of accountability. But like Dolan, you're 29 years old. You're well accountable because you're not retarded. Hmm. Now, I realize your brother says you are sometimes, but you're not. <laughs> okay, you understand that? So. You, you, don't, you cannot get baptized until you're old enough to repent. And repentance is simply saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. That's what repentance is. Turning away from that sin. And he said, then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then what does he say we will receive? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 39. Read, Angie. The promises for you and The promises for you. And your children. And who? Your and children. Your Read. And for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Will what? Call. Did, haven't we talked about over and over that the Lord has to draw you or call you? Mm -hmm. All right. Read verse 40. I love verse 40. With many other words. I mean, he, he preached a long sermon. He warned them. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Read. He warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. He's saying... Save yourself. In other words, you're the only one that can make that decision. Nobody can make, nobody can make you live for God. Mama, daddy, brother, and sister, preacher, nobody. That's a decision reserved strictly for you. All right? Read verse 41. 
those who accepted his message were baptized. Okay. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Well, that church grew fast, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, read. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. All right. They, uh, in other words, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching. Read. And to the fellowship. And to the fellowship. To the breaking of bread and to prayer. Okay. And I think it's very... Look at verse 47. Praise, Read verse 47. Praising God. Praising God. And enjoying the favor of all the people. And... And the Lord added to their number daily Such as should those who were being saved. So is the Lord doing that same thing today? Mm -hmm. He sure is. This is the same group of people that decided to crucify him. Exactly correct? right. He told them to repent. That's God's first step. We, we, we've done that even in this Bible study, okay? We have to be buried with him in baptism. The, the Bible, and we'll talk about this later, the Bible is full of baptismal verses demanding that we be baptized, okay? And then he says, receiving, the, when you're baptized, you would receive the Holy Ghost. And there would be evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost. In Acts 2, they spoke in tongues. Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus, spoke in tongues. The Samaritans are going to speak in tongues in Acts 8. Cornelius, which we're going to, we're going to do in detail, received the Holy Ghost with his friends. They spoke in tongues. The disciples of John the Baptist spoke in tongues. The Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Amen. Now, I'm going to cover that a little bit, a bit just a little bit later. Let's go back just one more verse. Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter number 10. All right. Dolan, read for me. You're doing a good job. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man in this... Caesarea. Caesarea called Cornelius. Yeah, Cor Cornelius. All right. Cornelius, a centurion. He was an Italian soldier. He had one mark against him right there, didn't he? <laughs> All right, read. Of the band called the Italian Band. All right. Uh, a devout man and right. one that feared God with all his... Hold that right there. Read it from NIV. Ruby. Verse 2. He and his family were devout. Devout. And God-fearing. And God-fearing. That's a wonderful man, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He was an Italian soldier. All right. Read, read Dolan. Mm. He gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Look at verse 3. He saw in a vision, uh, evidently about the ninth hour right. of the day, and an angel of God coming into him. An angel of God coming into him. And saying unto him, Cornelius. You know, here's a man that prays. He's God-fearing. And the angel comes in and he says, Cornelius, thy prayers and thine alms, your giving and your praying, has got God's attention. Now, he's a Gentile. He's not a Jew, okay? Up until chapter 10, only Jews received the Holy Ghost. Now, God, you, you remember where God wrote that world off at the Tower of Babel? Mm -hmm. And then he chose a man, Abraham. Now, God is going to go all the way back. He says, I didn't just redeem the Jews. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And so God's going to go back to all those people he had forsaken. And now he's going to give them a chance also to be saved. And, and Cornelius is the first Gentile or non-Jew to receive the Holy Ghost. All right. He looked on him and he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, thy prayers, verse 4, and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou, verse 6. Oughtest to do. Read from NIV, oughtest to do. Read verse 6. He is staying with Simon the tanner whose house is by the sea. And then I go to verse 7. That's all it says? That's it. Okay. And then, and then it's to What was the next verse saying? When the angel who spoke to him had gone... Cornelius, Cornelius called two of his servants. Now that's strange. Let me see your Bible. Soldier. NIV leaves out a portion of that verse. Right there. Verse 7. Bottom. 
Huh. And it doesn't... Is it a misprint? They left part of that out. That's okay. Okay. Mine says, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Okay. When the angel was, and, and when the angel which spake to Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he declared all these things to them, he sent him to Joppa to, get, to go get Simon Peter. Okay. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about, about noon, sixth hour. And he came very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet near at the four corners and let down. Here's this giant sheet. Let me see if I got a, a picture of that somewhere. Uh, I thought I had a picture of that. Right. There it is. Here's this giant sheep being let down. And Peter's seeing this thing. It's got all kind of four-footed beasts and fowls in the air. And, and the Jews in the Old Testament were given dietary laws. There were certain things they couldn't, they couldn't eat. Catfish, rabbits, all kind of stuff. And so the Lord lets his sheep down with all these unclean animals on it. And he says, Peter, rise and eat. And verse 14, but Peter said, not so, Lord, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice spake to him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, do not call common or unclean. Remember, at the Tower of Babel, he wrote that generation off as unclean. And God didn't deal with them now for more than 4,000 years. But now... He's going to get ready to save them. And, 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 and Peter's a Jew, and he has no dealing with the Gentiles. And yet he sees God saying, eat this unclean things. He said, no, Lord, I'm not going to do that. It's against the law. And God said, what I have cleansed, you can eat now. Okay? He doesn't understand it yet. This was done three times. And while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And he called and said, Simon, well, the Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men which were sent to him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am him whom you seek. What is the call wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man, and one that fears God and of good report among all nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. And then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Now, Simon Peter is no moss-backed Jew. He's always done what Jews do, and he has never had any dealing with a Gentile. So he takes six Jewish brethren with him as witnesses. And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter, he was not a pope. He was a disciple. Took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And he talked with him and went in and found many that were come together and said, You know how it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God had revealed to Peter it was all right now to go to the Gentiles. Therefore came I unto thee without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent you have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting to this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayers heard, thine alms are had in remembrance. Send therefore to Joppa and call for Simon, whose name is Peter. He lodges in the house of Simon a tanner. He shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we're all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. 
Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost with power and went about doing good. You are witnesses of all things which he did both at Jerusalem, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung. He, he's going to preach the resurrection, okay? Now, verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, Whosoever shall believe in him shall receive what? Remission of sins. Remission of sins or baptism. Okay. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, that's the Jews, which believed, were astonished. These six witnesses were astonished. Because on the Gentiles also was poured out what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Verse 46. Read that, Angie. How'd they know they got the Holy Ghost? For they heard them speak For they heard tongues. them speak with tongues. And praising God. And praising God. Then answered Peter, verse 47. Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized. He what? He ordered. Order? You mean a preacher can give orders? <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> Dolan, yes. do you mean the preacher can give orders? Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, don't you? Dolan. Of, that was a lot of years ago, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a private joke, okay? Okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> Woo! I feel like shouting, hallelujah. He commanded them, or he ordered them to be what? Baptized. That they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They what? How? In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Christ. He ordered them. Now, how did they get the Holy Ghost before they were baptized? Okay. There are four cases in the Bible where people got the Holy Ghost. In two places, they got the Holy Ghost and was ordered to be baptized. And then in two places, they were baptized and then received the Holy Ghost. So it's important that whether you get the Holy Ghost first or second. You still have to be baptized. Right. If you get baptized first, you still have to get the Holy Ghost. If you get the Holy Ghost first, because hold your finger right there, okay? Boy, you're asking some toughies tonight. <laughs> Look at John chapter 3. Well, I just thought a minute ago it, there was an order. <laughs> well, All right. I, I thought we read it, that there had to be an order. But All right. John Th there, is, there is an order, okay? Mm -hmm. It depends on who you are. The Jews... He made them get baptized mm -hmm. first. Right. The, the Gentiles, they were not rebellious against Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. So they got the Holy Ghost first and then had to be baptized. Look at John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that I do us, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom. See the kingdom. Nicodemus said, Can a man be born of his own? How can he know the second time he be born? Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of what? The water. Water <clears throat> and of spirit. So Jesus clearly commanded, You got to be born of the water and of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Flip your Bible to chapter 7 of the same book. Now we're going to see some fulfillment taking place, okay? 7, verse 37. Begin at verse 1, Angie. I'm sorry, you said John 7, 37? 7, 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Okay. Whoever believes in me. Whoever believes in me. As the scripture has said. Who believes what the scripture says about me. Streams. Of living water will flow from within. Rivers of living water, streams of living water shall flow out of his belly. That word belly means ho the hollow place of your life. Okay? Verse 39. By this he meant the Spirit. Okay. Whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Who later were to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. But in Acts he's been glorified, hadn't he? Right. And now he has poured out the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2. 
And now he's even reached way beyond the Jews. And he's starting to give the Gentiles also the Holy Ghost. How did they know? How did those Jews know the Gentiles got the Holy Ghost? Tongues. They heard him speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. All right. Now watch this, okay? Watch this. Go to chapter 11. Acts. Uh-huh. Acts 11. Okay. Now, remember, Peter ordered them. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. All right? Now, when Peter gets back to Jerusalem, he's got a lot of explaining to do. Because the Jewish nation as a whole hasn't accepted the Gentiles getting the Holy Ghost. So they want to know, why did you go? Look at verse number 2. And when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they that, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went into men uncircumcised, and you ate with them? Shame on you. You mix with the Gentiles? Jews don't do that. Then Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expanded by order. And he talked about this vision that God gave to him about God no longer having an unclean people. All right? And uh, look at verse 12. Verse 11. And immediately there were three men already came to the house where I was, sent from Caesarea to me. And the Spirit made me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto them, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Look at verse 14, Angie. He will bring you a message through which you and, and all your household will be saved. He said he's going to give you a message that's going to tell you how to be saved. Read verse 15. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them, and he had... Come on us at the beginning, All right. as he had come on us in the beginning. As he, and as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Where was the beginning at? On the day of Pentecost. He said, they got it just like we did. I, and who was I uh, that I could withstand God? Then remember how the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Verse 17. Angie? So if God gave them the same gift. He gave them the same gift. As he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard these things, they beheld their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance and life. So you see, God is no respecter person. And let me tell you something else. I don't care what any denomination preaches anymore. We're living in the last days. And God said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And it's so important in this hour to believe what the word has to say about it. And, and, and just like God gave them the Holy Ghost, he's pouring out the Holy Ghost today. Amen. So we have to repent. What's the next step? Be baptized. Be baptized. How? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Why? For remission of sin. the remission of sin. Don't let nobody tell you that you just get baptized because Christ did. We don't, get, we don't even get baptized for the same reason that Christ did. Now, let me show you something else. Go to Acts 19 and I'll stop. Remember how J when John the Baptist came, he was baptizing, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. But he baptized unto repentance. He didn't use any name, okay? Watch this. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, passing through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain what? Disciples. These were disciples of John the Baptist, okay? And he made thousands of them. He said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We hadn't heard about it yet. He said to them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto? John's baptism. John's baptism. Then said Paul, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. You need to underline this. Because you're going to be studying this again. When they heard this, they were? Baptized in the name, in the name of? 
Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. So he rebaptized the disciples of John the Baptist because we're talking about all those thousands of people. At this point, it's only this group, but they all have to be rebaptized mm -hmm. because the blood of Jesus had not yet been applied. Mm -hmm. What applies the blood of Jesus? Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? He said, so he, he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus, and Paul laid his hands on them, and what happened? Verse 6. The Holy Spirit came on them. And they? And they spoke in tongues. And? And prophesied. And prophesied. And there was about 12 of them. And this was the beginning of the Ephesian church, which later on we're going to find out is going to number eventually 47,000 adults. But that was the beginning of that church, was the rebaptism of the disciples of John the Baptist. So people say, Pastor, I've been baptized. I said, How do you get baptized? Well, we got baptized in the titles of Father, Son, and Spirit. I said, Did you get baptized in Jesus' name? No. I said, well, let's get baptized in Jesus' name because the name of Jesus in the waters of baptism is what takes away your sins because that's where the blood is applied. There was one scripture that said in the name of... Father. All right, let's go back to Matthew 28. Okay. Now, this is before Jesus went away, okay? He's given them a commission, Okay. Did Jesus know what his name was? Did Jesus know what his own name was? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know what your name is? Sure. Your name is Dolan Cook, right? Mm hmm Are you a father? Yes. Are you a husband? Yes. Are you a son? Yes. You got all kind of titles, don't you? Mm hmm What's your name? Dolan. Dolan. If I say father, I may, 50 people in the church may stand up. But if I call somebody a specific name, they know who I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. All right, look at Matthew 28. Jesus came and spake unto him, saying, All power is given unto who? Verse 18. Heaven and earth. Wait, all power is given unto? No, oh, me. Me. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ has all power and authority. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, N-A-M-E, of what? The Father. What is the Father's name? Jesus. Jesus. And the, and the Son. What's the Son's name? Jesus. What, what's the name of the Holy Spirit? Which is the same Spirit, the same as God. It's Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he didn't repeat these words. He fulfilled these words when he baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. Because in, in Matthew 28, 18, and 19, it doesn't say names. It says name of the Father. The name of the... What is the name of the Son? Jesus. Jesus. What is your name, Dolan? Dolan. Are you a father? Yes. Are you a husband? Yes. Are you a son? Yes. Are you a scallywag? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's important that it is the name that has to be applied. Follow me? So when I baptize you, how am I going to baptize you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of your sins. Why? Because you've asked God to forgive you. And now we're going to take your sins away through the name of Jesus. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Question? Okay. Now, it's very important to understand. Is this the only verse like this one? Oh, no. In Matthew 28, 19? R right, where it says that. That's the only place where it says a Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, Luke says, in my name, remission of sins. And Simon Peter on the day of Pentecost said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because they, already, they, they understood who he was. Mm -hmm. They knew that by his spirit, he was the father. By his flesh, he was the son. But there was only one name. He was both God and man, both carrying one name. You follow me? So that's why we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you'd have called him God on earth, that wouldn't, I mean, would that not? That's his title. Right. But if you want to talk to him personally, his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one more example. Go to Colossians 3.17. Colossians, well, that's in the New Testament. 
It's a small book. I gotta find it myself. Colossians. How'd you find that so fast? You don't have a Mark Bible. All right, read uh, 3, verse 17 for me, Angie. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed. Whatever you do, word or deed, what does it say? Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do what? Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? Giving thanks to God the Father. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. When the Bible refers to the Father, it is referring to the, that one eternal spirit that indwelt that flesh, which was the Son. So by His Spirit, He was the Father. By His flesh, He was the Son. Follow me? Mm -hmm. For instance, go to Isaiah chapter 9 and one more verse. We'll, we will cover this again uh, in the next lesson, okay? Isaiah chapter 9. Uh-huh. Verse, verse. Verse 6. Verse 6. Read for me, Angie. You're a very good reader. Thank you. For to us a child is born. Child is born. To us a son is a given. A son is given. And the government and the government will be on his shoulders. Okay. And he will His be name shall what? Says, here huh? says his name. Okay, his name. And he will be called. He will be called. Wonderful. Wonderful. Counselor. The son will be called wonderful. The son will be called counselor. The Mighty son will be called. Mighty God. Mighty God. Everlasting. Father. Everlasting. Father. Father. So the Son would be called the Father. Mm -hmm. That's why when Jesus came, He was the Father by His Spirit. He was the Son by His flesh. But He only had one name. And what was that name? Jesus. Jesus. So that's why we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Because only His blood can take away your sins. Only. Nothing can take away your sin except the blood of Jesus. One more verse. I told you I was going to just one more. One more verse. Look at Acts 4 and verse 12. Acts 4 and verse number 12. All right, read verse 12, Angie. Are you greater than our father Jacob? Oh, oh, uh, uh, 412. Acts. I'm sorry. Did I say John? I Acts. Don't know. You probably did say Acts. Acts. Uh, did I say Acts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Acts, Acts 412. Four. And read verse 12. Look at verse, do, do verse 10. Okay. Then know how, uh -huh. then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Okay. He is the stone of your building. The stone you builders rejected. Okay. Which has become the capstone. Okay. Salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name. There under is heaven. no other name under heaven. Given to men. Given to men. By which we must. There's be only saved. one name in this entire universe that can save you. And that name is Jesus. Jesus. That's why you, you'll hear me all the time glorifying Jesus. Okay, let's stop right here and we'll pick up next lesson. Let's pray. Father, we just take a moment to thank you, thank you for this word. And we ask that you would lead us and guide us and direct us. Lord, we know that salvation is our individual choice. No one can make that decision for us. But we do thank you for showing us the way. We thank you, Lord, tonight for this Bible study. Lord, would you be with Dolan and and Angie and the children this week and protect them and keep them in all of thy way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, one more comment before I stop. Uh, Any time that you want to come to church and be baptized, we do baptismal services at any service that you want to be baptized in, okay? It, that's strictly up to y'all. So if, if after y'all pray about this, you want to be baptized, don't hesitate to ask me. Because obviously you've already repented, both of you have, and I'll do it at any time you want me to do it, okay? Okay. You want to join Bible study? Mm -hmm. Are you learning? Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm.